Hi guys, tonight I'm going to look at Portia from The Merchant of Venice. So her very popular and well-known speech or monologue, The Quality of Mercy is Not Strained. So if you're not familiar with my videos, what I do is I break down what is she talking about. So if you're not familiar with Shakespeare, I'm going to explain everything in modern language. And I'm also going to look at acting choices. So this video is primi primarily for actors. And I say this because there might be lots of people out there that are doing this for an exam or something. You will still get a lot out of, um, I'm going to explain what she's talking about, so that might help you. But I am also going to talk about acting choices there. Okay, so just letting you know. So let's dive in. So she starts with, The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. So in this uh, situation if you're not familiar she is pretending to be a lawyer and she's trying to convince Shylock um, to not press charges basically not go ahead with his um, char uh, I don't know what the right word is sorry um, his case against um, Antonio because uh, he, he said I want a pound of flesh I don't want you to pay me back you owe me money you were late I want a pound of flesh which would literally be, which would, would kill him basically so she's coming in, she's being very reasonable, um, and in this context, she is pretending to be a man. Now, if you are an actor approaching this, I do not recommend um, dropping your voice and pretending, I'm pretending to be a man, ha ha ha. This is not a comic monologue, it's a very intellectual monologue, and the, I think the most useful thing, of, thing to think of is to imagine a competent lawyer, so if you've ever watched a show with a lawyer on, which pretty much everyone has, a competent lawyer, she is a smart lady, and she is trying to win over Shylock and get him to drop the charges. It's not really for a judge, it's not really for a crowd of people, it is personal and she's talking to Shylock. And you're going to understand how that plays out as we go on. So she starts with the quality of, work, of mercy is not strange. So she's saying, about mercy we're talking about mercy here and mercy is not filtered it's not conditional it's given to any anyone it droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath so that means it falls on everyone equally just like the gentle rain from heaven it is twice blessed it get, it blesses it blesseth him that gives and him that takes so she's talking about in mercy, it contains kind of two blessings. Someone that gives mercy is going to feel the benefit and the person that receives it is also going to feel the benefit. So that's the twice blessed. Now, she kind of, at that point, she sort of goes on to like, now I'm going to give my examples in a very sort of lawyery way. So she's going to start talking about kings now. You'll see that this is a very, um, it's a convoluted journey that she takes us on going ah let me talk about kings and how amazing they are she's i think playing a little bit on shylock's ego a little bit and then once she started talking about the kings she pulls it back into actually um kings are best when they're like when they show mercy like god and we should all be like god therefore we should all show mercy so that's what she kind of goes on to and i'll break it down even more even more Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throne and monarch better than his crown. Crown. So, any so any time they say becomes in Shakespeare, it means like makes someone look good. It's becoming on you. So, um, tis mightiest in the mightiest. So let me talk about uh, the mightiest people and how great mercy looks when someone mighty uses it. So a a king uh, is going to look even better when he shows mercy than his crown makes him look. So he might look good in his crown, but mercy is going to make him look even better. His scepter, now let me go further into my example, she's sort of, this is her train of thought here. Uh, his scepter, and that's the kind of stick thing that they hold, or ye oldy wordy kings, his scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. See what, he, see what she did there? She kind of roped it back into, into God. Let me break it down even more, okay? Bear with me. So she's talking about his scepter. So his scepter is a symbol of temporal power, like the power on earth. And it makes him look 
amazing, majestic and awe-inspiring and um, the dread and fear and also maybe a little bit fearful and the, ooh, the kings with so much power and all that kind of thing. That's what the scepter shows and the crown makes them look good and all this kind of thing. But mercy is above all that, is above the sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. So it, it's above it's above all the looks, it's above all the symbols, it comes from the heart, it is an attribute to God himself, so it comes from the heart, uh, sorry, it comes from God, and it lives in the heart of kings and all people, as she goes on to say. So um, what you should take out of this is this, as I mentioned, she's kind of playing on Shylock's I think a little bit on his ego, but it's very, it's very reasoned. So as an actor, if you're performing this, this is very, very reasoned. Um, I would say with Portia, don't get too carried away. There is a part of her, and I think, I think it's an important part of her that is that is emotional and that does really want to get to Shylock, but he is a tricky one. He's been abused by people his whole life, racist people and he doesn't want to give this up and so but she knows she can win this is probably useful for you to think about because later on she basically tricks him and she's like well actually you just as a pound of flesh so if you um spilling blood then um the contract is void and you will lose your life because in venice um this is some context for you in venice it was very very strict so if charlotte presses charges and keeps going with the case um if he were to get his pound of flesh, what she goes on to say in l later past this monologue is that um, if he spills any blood, he would become sort of, he would be tried for attempted murder basically. So when she's saying all this stuff in this monologue, she knows she's got a card in her back pocket. She knows she can win this case. But first what she wants to do is to appeal to his humanity. So there's something there that she's like, please, 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 Shylock, just agree with me. Just listen to me because you don't want to go ahead with this. Like, I know, I know I can win this and I, I don't want you to go through that. I actually want you to come around and remember you, hum, your humanity. And I don't want to do this thing to you that you don't, that you've been through so much already. So she feels a lot, but she's not going to be displaying it because she's pretending to be a lawyer and she's pretending to be a guy. She's going to keep all that inside. So layer, layer, layer. Okay. So where did we get up to? Uh, God himself. So now this is where she kind of brings it all back around. And earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. So she's saying, on earth, we need um, the way that we can be most like God is when we bring mercy into our judicial decisions, basically. So there she is, kind of wrapping all back around. Kings look great when they're merciful because it's like God, and we can look like um, we can be like kings. We can be uh, amazing and powerful and be like God in giving all the giving mercy and showing mercy. This is what we should be doing. So. What, a couple of things to note there in terms of Shakespearean performance. If you have something that has a pronounced ED on the end of something, so something like enthroned, it is enthroned in the heart. Yeah, just checking. Um, if, you ever, if you're ever not sure whether you need to pronounce an ED on the end, you can just check the rhythm of it because always in an iambic pentameter, you've got that in tabata, you've got that rhythm. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. Some editions will have a little accent on it, so you know that it needs to be pronounced, but a lot don't, especially online. So you need to check that, um, otherwise you're stuffing up your own rhythm. Now what you need to notice that, <coughs> excuse me, is that it's never enthroned, it should be enthroned, it's like a, a neutral sound, so it should sound natural. Try not to make it more posh than it needs to be. She's an intellectual character, but she doesn't need to be overly posh because you think Shakespeare needs to be posh. N never do that. You need to find the truth. So another one that pops up is likest God. So that's another neutral sound. So don't say likest, likest, likest gods. So we've done, um, they've, uh, when mercy seasons justice, now she really gets into it. Therefore Jew, now, uh, therefore Jew, though justice be thy plea, consider this, that in the course of justice, none of us should see salvation, 
we do pray for mercy. And that same prayer does teach us all to render the deeds of mercy. Okay, so what she's saying here is, um, even though you're asking for justice, I know that you came here today saying, I want justice, I want justice. Consider that. If we were all asking for that, really, with no mercy being shown, none of us would get off lightly. None of us are uh, sin-free. You know, we all make mistakes. We've all done things wrong. And if we never show, showed mercy in our lives to other people, we would never see the goodness in each other. We would never, we would never see salvation. So, and often when they mention salvation, they mean like they would never get through to heaven. So she's kind of layering it here. So not just so we, um, if we all pushed for justice, God would, if he had no mercy, God would be like, nah, you're not going into heaven, but also on earth. If we all pushed for justice in every area of our life and never showed mercy, we wouldn't, none of us would do well out of that. So then she changes tack. So this is a really clear beat change here, even though it's in the middle of a line. So interestingly, never pause in the middle of a line, okay? She's got a full stop and she goes on to say, I have spoke thus much to mitigate the justice of thy plea, which if thou follow the strict court, strict court of Venice must needs give sentence against the merchant there. So if you ever see must needs, by the way, so must needs means has to, basically. So she's saying, I've, I've said all this to kind of balance the justice that you're looking for. And if you keep going with this, this strict court of Venice, so this very strict, literally what it is, strict court of Venice, has to give sentence against, against Antonio. So um, in terms of performance, always think about why why has she not paused there you'd think that she would kind of wait before she kind of goes all right well i've said my piece you'd think she'd kind of wait for an answer but she doesn't she keeps going maybe she can see that Sherlock's not going to give up on this so that's something that you can play in your face is that kind of like i'm going for this okay um and holding on and then seeing that's not going to work. All right, I'm going to keep going. I've spoke thus much and keep going. Or maybe she's going to go, oh, I'm not going to let him speak because he needs to wait and think about it. So she just keeps on going. Whatever her process is there, you should play that. Always with Shakespeare, play the acting on the line. Don't try and find lots of pauses to go, hmm, let me think, hmm, acting, acting. Act through the line always because... Shakespeare, a lot of Shakespeare is about rhythm, it's about flow. So you don't want to be putting big pauses in the middle of lines or anywhere really. Um, there are caveats to that, but I won't go into it here because that's too much. I hope that made sense. Overall with this monologue, you need to think about balance um, and connect connecting to emotion, but not letting too much of it out. It is not a, whoa, Shakespeare monologue. It is much more a reasoned monologue. It's supposed to be like that. So if you, so it's a good, it's a good monologue for maybe a serious dramatic character. I would say female or male, you could use this monologue because it, you know, she's pretending to be a guy. It, it's a very sort of generic, it's not a gendered monologue um, in its content. So, but don't use this if you're auditioning for a character like maybe like Juliet, for example. Don't use this monologue because it's not going to show um, the emotion, the raw emotion that other characters in Shakespeare have. Uh, Portia is not a really a raw emotion character. She's a thinky, contained, smart, uh, rational person, and she doesn't really get to show too much she's a little bit girly sometimes but she's not like a Juliet where she's like I'm gonna kill myself if you don't help me she's not like that she's like well I'll I'll reason with you and let's see what happens so this is a good choice for dramatic monologues that are a little bit more of a contained character even maybe a Desdemona could be a good monologue for that and it's fairly good monologue for beginners because it's pretty um it's pretty straightforward in its language and there are, are a lot of end stop lines so you are taking your breath at the ends of lines so you're not having to like rush through a lot of things and that's it that's an easy one so let me know if you have any questions and of course let me know if you have any particular monologues you would like me to look at good night see you next time